Hello friends. We all know CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. Ajax CRUD is something that allows us to perform database insert, update and delete without submitting a form or without a page refresh. Let us take a look at this application developed in PHP and MySQL with Ajax and jQuery. You can see in this application, on the left hand side, it shows the list of products. As of now, there is no product added, so it is showing no products found. On the right hand side, you can add the product. So let us add a new product. You can see the product is added and it is showing in the product list. At the same time, you can see there are two action button. You can edit the product or you can delete the product. So let us edit. If I click on edit, so the details are displayed in this update form and you can update it. Let us change the stock to 100. So the product is updated. You can see the stock is updated. Let us add another product. So the other product is already added here. You can see the list of products is displayed here. You can edit it or you can delete it. So if we delete it, you can just delete. So it is deleted from the list. So all this CRUD operation, select, insert, update and delete. All these are happening in this application using Ajax only. We are not submitting a form and the entire page is not refreshed. We are just refreshing this product list. By using Ajax only, we are doing the insert, update and delete. So let us see how we can develop this application using PHP with Ajax. I have created a folder called Ajax underscore CRUD under XAMPP HTDocs and all the files and folders will be under this folder Ajax underscore CRUD for this application. So let me open this in Visual Studio Code. So I have opened this project in Visual Studio Code. So let me just show you first. This is the products.sql which is actually table creation script and there is some data also being inserted in this table. And database connect.php, dbconnect.php is the database connection script. I'm using a demo database to connect to the database. I'm using MySQL I connect. And index.php is the HTML file. So far, I have just created it without any PHP code in it. So if you see this, this is just an HTML document. It's using Booster 4 font awesome. And there is a, a table. There is a table defined in column 8. So I have divided this in column 8 and column 4. So column 8 is for the table. And table just shows the table heading so far. And on the right side, column 4 is used for the addition of product and update product form. I will be using this column 4. And style.css is the so far the style that is used for this uh, index.php. And JS folder, I do not have anything as of now. So we'll create the JavaScript file and keep it in JS folder. So if we run it now, let me just run it now. So, so if we run it now, it will show like this. So we are not selecting anything in the data from the database. So that is why it's not displaying anything. So let us now select all the products and display it under product list using PHP. So we'll be using actually the read operation of CRUD, which is actually the select operation. So let us do that. So we'll write the PHP code in index.php. So basically what we'll do, we'll select all the products from the products table. And then in a loop, we'll display the products in this HTML table. Using a for each loop, we'll display the products. So first of all, we have to connect to database. So let us include dbconnect.php and then we'll write the SQL statement.
So here we have used the dbconnect.php and then our SQL statement is this and then we are executing the query. Now $connect is the our connection handler. If you see dbconnect.php, it is returning $connect. So we are using that in our SQL execution query. So now we'll use a for each loop in the table. So this is our heading. Table heading is there. So after this, we'll write our PHP code for each loop to display the products. So here you will see these are our column heading. So we have serial number product ID. So let us just write the product ID now. I will write the serial number later. So we'll print the product ID and product name, etc. So we have printed all the fields here. Now there is a serial number. So serial number, so we'll use a counter here and print the counter as a first column. So we have printed all the columns here. We will have to use else also. So in case there are no products found in the table, we will just print no products found. So this is what we have written. Since there is no products, we'll just print no products found. So with that, let us run it and see whether it is working or not. So now you can see all the products are printed here. And now we have to just see in the action, I'm not printing anything in the action. So let me just print blank here. So in the action, we will use edit and delete later. So as of now, we are selecting all the products and displaying it in the HTML table. Now just to test the else condition, in case there are no products in the products table, we just need to see else condition is working fine. So we'll just delete all the rows and see how it is printed. So you can see that it's, there is no products now. So it is printed no products found. So we'll just need to some little bit of formatting here. So let us do that. We'll use a span here. So let me see how many columns are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 columns are there. Okay, now it's looking fine. So read operation for the card are done now. We have selected all the products and displayed in, in the HTML table. So let me just include all the data now. I have a script here, so I'll just copy, I'll just create it. So all the products are now displayed. Read operation or select operation for the CRUD is done now. So now we'll use the add product, which is actually the create, create operation for the CRUD. So it will insert a row in the product table. So let us do that, add product. So we'll create a form in index.php. 
we have already mentioned that we have a column for here and this is for add product and update product so let us create a form here so we'll just create three fields product name price and stock and there will be a button will not have any action in this form we'll just use ajax so we are not actually submitting the form here So we are using number for price and stock and this is for simplicity purpose only. So let us give some mean and max value. So for stock we are allowing zero stock but for price we have minimum one. Let us now add the button. So we have created the form. So let us now run and see how the form is coming. Okay, the form is displayed. Let us just add a heading here. Okay, so let us now add code for the add button. So we'll call a JavaScript function here on an on click event of this button. So we are calling a JavaScript function called add product. So let us write the add product function. We'll create a new file for JavaScript. So let us do that. Let us save this file in JS folder and let us give a name crud.js. And now we'll include this crud.js in our index.php. So we have to add that here. So in this function, we'll get all the values from the form and then we'll validate the form. If the form is valid, then only we'll proceed for the Ajax script. So we'll write a validate function uh, for all the fields for the form and accordingly we'll proceed. So let us do that. So we'll create a separate function for uh, form validation because we'll be using that for update product as well. So let us call that function as validate form and we'll call that function and if the validation is successful, then only we'll proceed for the Ajax. So let us write that now. So we'll call the validate form and pass these three values. Validate form function will return either true or false. So that is why we are using not validate form. That means if the validate form returns false, then we'll give a message. Otherwise, we'll proceed for Ajax script. So let us write the validate form now. We'll print the validation error message for each input field. So we'll create a div just below the input field.
So for all these three fields, we have added a div just to print the error message in case the validation fails. So in our function, we'll just check it's simple validation we'll do using JavaScript. Just check whether the values are empty or not and the values should be positive or not negative. So it's a simple validation that we'll be doing. So we'll define a flag here. Just initialize the flag as true. Valid equal to true initialize. We'll make it false if any validation fails. So we are assigning valid as false if there is an error. Similarly, we'll do that for price and stock. So here if you see the price and stock, these are number field actually. So we'll just check some validation here. So we are returning valid here, whether it is true or false. So accordingly, it will return false or true. So let us just see uh, whether it is working. We will just test it, this validation. So let us refresh it. I click add, there is no message or nothing is happening. So there is some issue. So let us just see. Let us first check whether if there is any error or not, console. So there is no error. So we have some error here, syntax error or something. So let us just check it. So here we have to use hash. So it means the hash here. Let me just check if there is any other issue. Let us now run it. Okay, so the validation messages are coming. So we'll just change the color to red here. So we'll add a class. And the style will add this. So let us now refresh it. And I'm just clicking on add button. So the messages are coming now. Now if I enter something, test. So we have to just clear the message here. So before validation, we'll just clear the existing message. So if we turn it now, so let me enter that product name test. So it's working now. So let me enter the price. Okay. So let me enter a negative value. Let me enter zero. So this is working now similarly for the stock also okay so this is also working now if we just enter zero we have not written anything so nothing will happen now so now we'll proceed with writing the ajax script so our validation is done now we'll proceed for ajax we will take the values and send these values to a PHP program 
and in the PHP program, we will add the product in the uh, product table and also we have to refresh the table here. So let us write the Ajax script now. So let us name the PHP program as add product.php. So we'll run add product.php using Ajax. So in this Ajax scripts, we are calling add product.php using the method post and we are sending the data product name, price and stock and data type is text, which is actually the return data type and success function. We have to refresh the HTML table. So we'll write the response from the Ajax. There is an ID for this table. So this is our table. So this is the ID. So we will use this ID to write the response from the Ajax. So basically we will refresh the table. So this is our Ajax script. Now we have to write the add product.php. So we will create a new file. So basically in the new file what we will do, we will get all these three values from the form using the post method. and we will check whether the same product already exists in the database or not. If exists, then we will give an error message. But if the product does not exist, it's a new product, then we will insert a row in the products table and give proper message. Then we will refresh this table because the new product has to appear in this list. So we have to show that. So let us write the code for add product.php. Let us save it first. So first we will check whether the same product already exists or not. If number of rows is greater than zero, that means product already exists. So we'll give a message here. So we'll use two variables for uh, one for the error and other for the success. So if there is any row for the same product, so we'll give a message. Otherwise, in the else part, we'll go ahead and insert the row in the products table. So in this else condition, we'll write an insert statement to insert the row in the products table. So we have written the script for inserting row in the table. So let me just check whether it's fine or not. So you are inserting rows in the table in the products table. And if successfully insert, we are giving a message product added. And if not, if there is any error, we are giving an error message. We'll just initialize these variables. We have not yet added the 
message we are just assigning the message to the variable we are not printing the message so we have to keep some place where we want to display the error message so let us use that index.php so in index.php here we will add a div and we will write the message here now in add product.php we have success message and error message so we have to display that so we will use jquery script here so there is a standard bootstrap alert message i will just copy this i have written this already and i will just copy it and all we have to do is you will just print this in under show message we will just print that under show message so let us write that So this is a standard bootstrap alert. So I'm using that only. So since this is for success message, so I am using alert success and it will have a button to close the alert. So I'm using that and I have to just print the message here. So we'll just change the success to danger. So we are using alert danger in case of error. So with that, let us just test it first. So let us test if the same product already exists message coming or not. So we'll add product test. Okay, so nothing is coming. So let us see. So there is some error and it says HTML is not defined. So we have used HTML function in our jQuery. So there must be some syntax error. Let us see. So we don't see any problem here. Dot mesh dot HTML. HTML. So we'll just check show message here. We have show MSG. So this is correct. Error MSG and success MSG. So let us see the Ajax script. Here we have used HTML somewhere. HTML. So here we'll just it should be dot not comma. So let me just test it now. So let us refresh it. Add. So let us just add test. Okay, so there is some problem. It gives undefined variable dollar connect in add product.php on line 8. So if we go to add product.php, so line 8 is our SQL query. So the problem is that we have not included the db connect.php. So we need to connect to database first. So let us just connect to database at the beginning. So it should work now. Product already exists. Now you will see the list of products is not appearing because we have not written the code in our add product dot which we have to refresh the list again. First of all, let us add a new product. So let me just give this test one, two, three. Add. So product added. Now, if you go to database and check product one, two, three added, and if you refresh it, it should show one, two, three is added. So we'll go to add product.php, and once the product is added, we'll just refresh the table. So we'll just select from the product and display it in HTML table. What we have done that in index.php. So we'll just copy and paste it there. So in the table, so just copy this 
just copy this entire table here and paste it here we have inserted the row and we just need to display the HTML table so here so we'll just paste it here so we'll use the same thing only thing is that we have to just get the select statement again so from here we'll use the same select statement and put it in here after the product is added successfully we'll just select again and display in a loop all the products in the HTML table so it should now refresh the table so if we refresh it now let me add now test 999 price 500 and stock 300 so the product is added and the table is also refreshed and you can see the last product which is just now we added test 999 so add product is working you can close this message if i now click add again so it is saying product already exists but there is some problem it is not showing all the products so we have some issue here so let me just check in the add product.php so if the product already exists so so here we have to just move it out of this l statement so we have to just put it outside else because if the product already exists it will not go in inside so we have to keep it outside so we have to select all the products again doesn't matter whether that product already exists or not so now let us see okay so let me add a new product so product is added new product now if i click again okay so now it is working fine product already exists and the list is also refreshed so all we have to do now is just clear these values once the product is added successfully we'll just clear these values so we'll just reset the form so if you go to index.php we have used an id for the form here we made a mistake here so we'll use this id go to add product.php and here after displaying the message you will just reset the form okay now let us see so we'll refresh it and now add a new one so product is added here and the form is also cleared click add again okay so this is fine let us add another one okay so this is also working fine so this way we are able to add the new product so create and read are done now we'll be doing the update update product so in this html table we have kept this column action column blank we will add two buttons here one for edit and one for delete so let us do that in index.php in index.php we have kept this column last column this is the column where we will be adding the action buttons so let us add that
So we'll be calling index.php only and we'll pass two parameters also here. One for the product ID, uh, which the product which we want to update and one flag. The flag will be edit so that we'll come to know that if edit flag is set, that means we are going to update. So we'll show the update form. So let us add these two parameters. So we are adding product ID. So we'll just have to define this product ID. So we'll just add it here. And there is another parameter flag. So we have to define that also. So we are using flag equal to edit. And let us just for the timing, we'll just add another button for that delete. So if we refresh it now and let's see how it is showing. So it is showing two buttons, one for edit and another for delete. So let us now write the code for edit. So for edit, we'll be calling the index.php with parameter as product ID and a flag edit. We will see if the flag is edit, then we'll show the update form here instead of add form. Otherwise, add form will be here. So add form will be the default form. When a user clicks on edit button, the edit form will be displayed here. So let us write the code for that. So here we'll process the input parameter product ID and flag. So let us add code here. So we are just checking if request flag is set. If we set dollar request flag and dollar request flag equal to edit. Let us just take a variable here. So we are just selecting the details of the selected product ID and we'll get the values for that product and assign those values in variables and then we'll show the values in an update form. So we have got the values of product name, price and stock for that product ID. Now we'll define a product update form where we'll be showing these three values so that user can update it. So it will be similar to add form. So I'll just copy this and use this for update form. So I'll just put it here first. And change it to update. And we have to use the value here. Also, we have to define a hidden field for the product ID. So we have used the ID here, if you see it, we have used the product IDs which was selected for update and we are using that 
as a hidden input value because we need this for the update of the product. So this is our update form and one more thing we have to change it here. We have add product. So we'll just change it to update product and change the button as save. We'll also add a cancel button here. And one more thing we have to do, initialize the variables we have used here. Product name price stock and product ID. And also we are defining a flag here. So we'll just use that flag in a variable. So we have got the details for the product ID and we have displayed that in the update product form. Here is our update product form. We have to use a flag so that if the flag is added, then only we will show the update product. Otherwise, we will show add product. So let us just add if else here. We will also use another flag here because in case here we are selecting the products and we are checking if the product exists. If product does not exist, we do not want to show the update product form. So that is why you will set a flag here saying that product is found. We are initializing this flag as false and if we get the details for the product, we are assigning it to true and we will show the update form only when we see that the flag is product found flag is true. So here we are adding another condition here. So you can see that we are using this flag if flag is edit and we found the product then we are showing the update form. Otherwise, we are showing add product or add form. So initially add form will be displayed and once user clicks on a product for edit, then update form will be displayed. So let us now see how it is working. Let us refresh it. So now let us click the first one test. Okay, the values are coming update product and the values are displayed. Let us select this new product. New product 700 100. So values are being displayed. If I click on cancel, add product is coming. I click on test one. So the values are displayed in the update forms. Now we have to write the script for updating the product. So we'll write the Ajax script so that the values will be updated in the database. So in our update product form, when user clicks on save button, we'll call a JavaScript function update product. And within that JavaScript function, we'll write Ajax script to update the product. So here, this is our save button and we are calling a JavaScript function named update product. So let us write the code for update product function. We already have the JavaScript file so we'll just add another function here. In this update product function also, we'll be using Azure script. So let us just copy the same script for add product. We'll just change this to save our time. Now remember that we have to add another value here for the product ID. And validate form will remain same because we will be doing the same validation and we have already written the function for validating the form. And here, instead of add product, we will now update the product. And let us change this to 
update product update product.php will be a new file we will have to write that and we have to add another parameter here product id and this will be same so now we will be writing the script for update product.php so we will use the add product.php and save it as update product.php and then we will change it so we have to add the product id and here again we will be validating if the same product name already exists or not so we will use this script just add another where condition here that the same product name should not exist for other product so this will be same here change it to update so we will change this sql script so we will rewrite this sql script we have to use the update statement now So we are updating the products with the product name, price, stock, where product ID equal to selected product ID. So this will be same, we have to just change it to updated and product not updated for the error. So you'll use the same SQL script and that HTML table just to refresh the table with the updated value. Now one thing we have to do here since we change the index.php here for the product list table so we have to just add this in add product and as well as update product so if we go to update product.php just add it and also we added the action button so we have to update that also and same thing we have to do in add product also later we'll change it so that we don't have to change multiple places i'll show that so with that let us now see how it is working update product refresh it select cancel select let us change stock 100 to 1000 for the first this is for the first row save so product updated it's saying product updated and the stock is also updated now if i select test 22 suppose and let us change it to test 999 because test 999 already has so you should give the message so product already exists let us change it to one so products updated test 9991 so all we have to do we have to just change this because we are we don't want to uh, reset the form here so we'll just change it to if you go to update product here just remove it we don't want to reset the form so if we refresh it and let us this test 999 and let us change it to price 500 550 save test 99550 so now it is fine you cancel it okay so product is being updated click on it here okay so it's working now one thing you can change it 
if I select a product and do not change anything but click on save button. So it's still updating and we do not want to uh, call the Ajax unnecessarily because we have not changed anything. So we'll add a little bit of code just to check whether the form is updated or not. And if the form is not updated and save button is clicked, we'll just give a message that no changes to save. So let us just add that script. So we'll go to crud.js. Here we'll add a little bit of jQuery just to see whether the form is form data is changed or not. Our form, if you see the form here, we have the ID as FRM. So if any input value in the form is changed, we'll change the form state as change, which is true. So let us do that. So basically we are changing the form state as changed and we'll check that before updating the product, we'll just check whether the form state is changed or not. So in update product, before calling the Ajax, we'll just check. So if form data is changed, we are calling the Ajax function. If not, we are just giving a message and returning false. And after updating the product, we'll just reset the form state. So here, let us just copy it. So after the product is updated, we'll just, we'll just change the form state as false. Let us now see. Click on save. No changes to save. No changes to save. Let us now change it. Let us give it 2001. Show product is updated. Cancel. So it is working now. Click on it. No changes to save. Change it to 500. Save product is updated. We'll just add a little bit of CSS here. Let the height be fixed here for the message. So here ID is so message. Let us refresh and see. So just click on save fine and let us make it 800 save close save make it so our form is so far working for add and update and read anyway we have seen that so create read and update these three operations are done now we will be doing the delete operation. So for deleting the product, we will go to index.php and in our HTML table, here we have used the delete. So we will call a JavaScript function here, on click event. And we have to send the parameter for this. So we are calling a JavaScript function del product. And we'll use the parameter for the product ID and we'll also send a product name just to show that uh, that product name is being deleted to the user. So let us add the two parameters here. We'll add the product name also.
So two parameters are added here. And also let us just use this JavaScript void zero here for each day. Now let us update this product name. Update product.php. Okay, so now, now in index.php, on click equal to delete product. So we have to just create this function in our JavaScript file. So two parameters. Let us just give a confirmation first. So if user confirms it, we'll call the Ajax script to delete the product. And here we don't need all these parameters. We just need the product ID. Rest will be same. So this is our Ajax script. Now we have to write the code for delete product.php. Let us take update product.php and we'll save it as delete product.php. So we just saved it and we just need the product ID only. Don't need this. So we'll just need the delete statement here. So we are just deleting the product from the products table and giving the message and rest it will be same rest it will be same because we just need to refresh the table and the deleted product should not appear in the product list we don't need this so let us now see if we are able to delete the product so let us refresh it let us select the first one test so you click on delete and click on ok so we have some issue here there is some error it's saying the syntax error in our sql statement there is some issue so let us just check it delete from products our product id let us let us just refresh it so we select the first one okay product got deleted it's saying message it's saying product deleted and also you do not see that in the list so let us select another one suppose the last one cancel okay so product deleted now if you see the confirm message here it's saying the product name test 111 which is this is the product so that is why we are actually sending the product name as a parameter to the javascript function just to give the message so our delete operation is also working so we have completed our create, read, update and delete all these four operations using Ajax in PHP. So one change we will be doing here just for improvement purpose. You can see that for every operation we are refreshing the HTML table which shows the list of products. So we have this HTML table defined in four different files so in case we have to change anything in the html table we have to change in all four places so to reduce our work we'll just keep this selecting the products and displaying in html table in a separate file
and include that in all other files. So let us take a look at index.php and here so let us just move it so we are just selecting all the products from the products table so you can use it here and let us just separate it let us just take the table cut it and create a new file and paste it let us save it and give a name as product list.php so once this is done in index.php we'll just include it and copy this and paste it in all other files go to delete product.php then add product.php do the same thing for update product.php let us now just test it if everything is fine so let us add one so product added let us update it let us change the stock to 80 product updated click on save again no changes cancel it's working let us delete it so product is deleted you can see it is not showing in the list so all the CRAD operations are done using Ajax so you can see now that create or insert read or select update and delete all these four CRAD operations are being done using Ajax so we have completed our tutorial for building an application using Ajax CRUD. You can visit my website codehowto.com and you can see all the topics related to PHP, CodeIgniter and Laravel. You can search here. So you can see the topics here. So if you search by CRUD, you will see this topic there. How to develop a CRUD application in PHP using Ajax without page refresh. So you can see the development steps here. You can download the source code. You don't need to sign up or register yourself. You can see the video description for all the links given there. And you can visit this website for all other topics as well in PHP web development. Thank you for going through this entire tutorial with me. Hope it will be useful for you. And if you like it, please give a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching the video.